Hey folks, Jonathan here. Back to working on the uh, pocket valve engine. Got the uh, surface done, both sides. We're going to set it up on here and get it where we want it and drill it. Uh, get it bolted on. I'm going to use some more old screws. These was actually in the uh, a box of... Uh, well, it was a, I bought a bunch of Model T Ford parts, and that's what the other bolts was out of. I'd love to use the other bolts, but I don't have them. Uh, if I use quarter 20s, the heads are a little bit, you know, big sticking out. So we're going to countersink and use these flathead screws in it. And that'll sort of look old anyway. But uh, they're from Model T. Don't know what part. But uh, we're going to get to work on this and uh, see if we can maybe get it drilled and put on there. Uh, We'll use eight, just like we did on the last one. It seemed to seal up real good, so. What I'm gonna do is drill this one first. And then we're gonna go ahead and tap it. put one bolt in it and we'll start out with just one bolt but what I'll do is take it over to the other drill press or to the drill press and I'm going to go ahead and drill this out to a quarter and countersink it and then we'll come back we'll tap this and then we'll put one screw in it and that'll get us a good start okay we've got three more to go Two on this side, one over here. You see they're closer together down here, but I mean, this is where you're gonna have more of a chance of an oil leak and, uh, than you are up here. But uh, Last engine, I didn't put any in the center, didn't really need any. Probably didn't need this many, but you know, it's not a big deal. Put one more here, and like I said, one there and one there, and that's it. But I'm doing these one at a time and uh, because I don't, wanna, I don't wanna move the machine. You know, I can zero it out and come back to zero or whatever, but I just would prefer to do it one at a time, that way they're all exact. And with it being countersink and uh, the hole I'm drilling in here is a quarter inch and a quarter inch bolt, so you know it's got to be pretty much exact for it to, uh, to go on right. And uh, as you can see there's a little overhang on this one, but we can take that overhang off. That's not a big deal, we can uh, take it off with the die grinder or something like that, or just leave it, it don't matter. I kind of like being able to tap on the, the side to get it off which you'll see in a video coming up on the other engine when I took it off. But uh, anyway, we get at it and get these three finished up. Then we can get it off, find center on our hole, come up and start boring. All right. Okay, folks, I screwed that one up. I went too far in. It's not a big deal. It's still threads. It goes down far enough, it gets past my open spot. But I think I might have just screwed this one up too. But at least my screw ups will match from one side to the other. Get ready to find out. And I know I don't have to stick all the bolts back in every time, but I just did. Uh, yeah, a little bit, but not nearly as bad as the other side. Like I said, the bolts are long enough, they come through, they're, they're fine. So. Alright, let's tap this. Finish the drill. Yeah, this one's not as bad, so here I just said that my screw ups was going to match. And Heck, I can't even do a screw up that matches the other side. But, it's not a big deal. I don't want to lose any sleep over it, that's for sure. I'm trying 
try to leave this where it'll slip. I don't have a tapping head, so. Start coming up back. Well, after I tapped it, it matches. It just about matches. I'll show you a close-up of my mess-up in a little bit. Better to, better to try and mess up than not try it all. Okay, they're all screwing in good. We've got one left to do. And this will be one more thing finished and out of the way. And we'll go ahead and get it knocked out. And I'll, uh, I'll show you where I screwed up at in here and hopefully I won't screw it this next one up. Anyway, not a big deal. Show you more. Okay, we got them all threaded and good to go and drilled. And you can see my little screw up there. A little close to the inside and the one on here. But they match. So uh, it'll be all right. Not a big deal. Uh, I actually threaded them far enough I can get a long bolt and go down in. You know, because this is sort of tapered, so it gets wider down at the bottom. But so I can go down in farther if I need to. But so far, they feel like they're holding in good. So I think they'll be all right. All right, now I'm going to find center of this. I bolt our cover on. I'll come up, and then uh, we'll start boring on it. Okay, folks. I wanted to show you a couple of books here uh, that I've got. I had to buy. I had to buy two lots of books to get all three of the volumes I needed, which was part one, two, and three of gas, gas and oil engines, and you can see they're different size books, but uh, what I ended up with was uh, two part twos, and this is, it's, the book's a little faded, I mean, it's, it's not in great shape, but uh, I don't worry about that. They wanted $40 for a set of two, but I didn't pay nothing that, so uh, anyway, it's got some really good information in it. Uh, this is sort of the online college before there was online college. And the reason I say that, uh, American School of Correspondence, they did a lot of books. And actually, here's a couple on electric trains, volume one and two. But uh, they've done a lot of books. And the way they do it is, is you would uh, read the book, and in the back, there would be some questions and answers, or questions you had to answer, and you would actually, let's see, examination, examination paper. Uh, you'd actually have to fill the answers out and then uh, send the paper in with the answers, and then if you passed, they'd send you a certificate. And you would, uh, you know, I guess you'd be certified in that particular ordeal, but, uh, you know, this is not like the volumes of a novel where it would go from one to the next and you would miss out if you missed the other stuff. Uh, some neat stuff. Sleep valve engine. That was the Willie's Nights. Uh, anyway, I want to give this book away to somebody that, you know, would appreciate it. Somebody that uh, would maybe enjoy reading it and going through it. Uh, it's got, you know, it, it, it's almost like it starts from the beginning. This is a 1919 copyright. And, uh, but it's got all the information, and I mean, you're really not going to miss anything on this. And a lot of good pictures of the engines, you know, drawings, different style. But anyway, if you're interested in this book, if it's something that you would like to have or something you'd read, or, or if you know somebody that would really, you know, get something out of it, uh, you know, I'm, I'm giving it away if you'll just, uh, we'll do a drawing on it. But, um, and you know, we can ship this overseas if they want it to go overseas, it don't matter. But it is in English. But uh, anyway, I thought you'd enjoy that. Uh, I want to show you one more thing real quick. I don't want to bore you with all these books. I know that uh, some of you are definitely not into stuff like this. Okay, this is one. This one's got a lot of motorcycles in it. 
Shickle. Never even heard of one. Six, uh, uh, six horsepower. Good looking bike. Uh, let me find the right one here. This is volume one. I was talking about explosion motor. You know, all all books don't call it an explosion motor. This is a 1916. This is cyclo Cyclopedia. Not Encyclopedia, but Cyclopedia of Automotive Engineering. And uh, everything in this book refers to an engine, gasoline engine, as an explosion motor. And explosion motor cycle. Uh, but anyway, that's what I was talking about. You know, they they did call them explosion, and it was motors, not explosion engine. But uh, not all books done that. Some did, some didn't. But I wanted to show everybody this tag here. This will be my excuse if my engine don't run. I can put this tag on it. It says uh, explosion proof motor, and uh, then I'll have an excuse. But but anyway, I want to show you that. But let me get back to work here. All right, getting started on. It. Okay, I want to add in there a couple of things too. I, someone had uh, said something about the uh, wasted spark or wasted ignition. Uh, isn't uh, your firing supposed to be driven from your cam? Uh, yes and no. And the reason I say that, you know, people don't realize that they even have an engine with uh, wasted spark or wasted ignition. Uh, Briggs and Stratton. Anything that fires, the points are on the the uh, crankshaft, you know, uh, just about every Briggs and Stratton made was that way. And uh, believe it or not, the V10s that they put in the uh, Prowlers and stuff, the uh, Chrysler, uh, they were wasted ignition. All Saturn four-cylinder cars are wasted ignition, uh, wasted spark. And uh, let me see, there was a, there was quite a few others. A lot of uh, cars made overseas and here in the United States. And uh, you know, it's just something people don't realize it, but. You know, anything, you know, all your motorcycles, the little Honda 70s, the Honda 50s that had the, the flywheel and the points down on the crankshaft, you know, that was all wasted ignition. Now, the reason uh, you w didn't want it as much on a motorcycle like this back then, and I may have told you before, but, uh, you know, you could get a motorcycle in two ways. You could get a battery ignition or you could get magneto ignition. And battery ignition, uh, meant you had to put a dry cell battery in it and replace the battery when it needed it. And it was a lot more expensive to get a magneto. So wasted ignition would, you know, fire twice as much. So you would lose your battery probably twice as quick. So, you know, you didn't want to do that on a on a battery. So, you know, that's just what we're doing on this. So Okay, folks, I've got this uh, this hole done. What we're going to do, I'm going to go ahead and pull the cover back off. I'm going to get a distance from uh, the inside of the case to where my points would run and the seal needs to be. And then I'm going to surface up there a place or, you know, build out a place for my uh, points plate. I want to do that before I move the table and uh, do the cam hole. And uh, but once we get them two things done, we'll, uh, we'll be finished up with that cover anyway. Okay, what I've done is set my height where I wanted it, and I'm just coming down and boring it. I'm going to just keep boring out until I get where I want to be. Okay, folks, we've got uh, the cover back on everything. Uh, I think what we're going to do is we're going to take this big washer and machine it down board out and make this into a plate for the points to bolt on and then we'll slot it on the uh, rotary table so we can put you know a bolt in each side with a good heavy spring and then make it where we can turn it back and forth and we'll put something on it for a lever that way we can you know advance and retard the timing on it but that's basically what we're going to do and uh, so if I get time I might mess with it a little bit tomorrow and but we'll see how it goes but we're moving right along all right, well, I appreciate everybody watching, and until uh, next time, bye.